Uh, this one comes from uh, Sin Shadows. Um, who would you say your biggest influences with both guitar and singing are? Well, let's see here. Guitar playing? That goes back to, well, see, I started playing guitar in 1988. So, you know, anybody like, you know, so my influences were like Metallica and Megadeth. Um, uh, like all the old speed metal, like Racer X and like Ingve and Steve Vai. Not that I can play any of that stuff. Um, as, the, as, you know, as the 90s progressed, I got more into the rhythmic stuff, like when Fear Factor, like the first, or not the first, but like, uh, when, like, when Demanufacture and, like, um, Burn My Eyes from Machine Head came out and stuff like that, it was more rhythmically oriented, and I'd hit a wall at that point, and I didn't really know what to do, so I was like, yeah, rhythms, I can do those. Um, other big influences, guitar-wise, I love Jeff Loomis, um, <clears throat> John Petrucci, Jeff, not that he's taught me anything, I haven't learned a thing from Jeff Waters, I kid. Um, yeah, people like that. Paul Gilbert, um, yeah. Um, that's a good start. Um, for singers, well, I have a lot of different vocal influences, but, um, for, for metal, um, a lot of my favorite singers would be guys like, uh, Peter Dolving from The Haunted, Devin Townsend, like I said, um, 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 um. Rob Halford, um, James Hetfield, old, you know, early, early Metallica, love the stuff. Um, what else do I like to sing these days? Um, well, my, okay, well, let's go, since I'm drawing a blank on um, my, my less metally and, and dare I say even more poppy influences sometimes, um, my biggest influence of all time would be Mike Patton from Faith No More, for sure. Um, Lane Staley, Alice in Chains, uh, Chris Cornell, so, you know, Soundgarden, um, things like that. Um, Brandon Boyd from Incubus, like the old stuff, because it was so much like Faith No More to me, at least style-wise, singing. Um, stuff like that is what kind of shaped where I went as far as uh, what I can do. And Tom Jones, love Tom Jones, you can't dog Tom. Plenty of cheesy good times in there. Um, so yeah, I hope that's a pretty reasonable list. Um, so I will move on. Uh, Dave, what is your favorite beer? Ligia. Um, free. Free beer is my favorite beer. But if I had to pick a kind, I would say... I like a lot of... Uh, I like a lot of uh, microbrews just because they're healthier, you know, I don't like your typical mass-produced, like Budweiser. I like Kokanee if I have to. Well, I love, love, love German beer, Hefeweizen especially, but I generally tend to stick to lagers and pilsners and lighter beer, not lighter, not like light beer per se, but uh, I love Czechvar, things like that. So, Answer, done. Let's see here. This one comes from Hiyakara. I hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Hiyakara. Anyways, um, how does it feel to start in a band like Annihilator, where you were kind of forced to be the front man, being the vocalist, and having to fire up the audience? What's the background story for you singing with Annihilator? Well, I'm pretty sure I've answered this one in quite a few interviews, but I'll... I'll give you a kind of a short form here. Um, uh, let me see here. How does it feel to start in a band like Annihilator? Well, it was uh, it was a very strange experience. I was pretty excited about it, but um, like I said, um, first band as a singer, I'd sang like backups and stuff like that, and with my old bands, like local bands and whatnot. And uh, I used to get up and sing with my friends' bands and stuff, just like, just when we were doing shows together. Um, but it was very strange, just because the timing with everything and all the things that were going on in Jeff's life and his move from Vancouver back to Ottawa and didn't really get a chance to hang out. Kind of was like, okay, you're in the band, see ya, I'm moving. 
and um, a month later, going on the road and doing festivals. And um, so yeah, like, wasn't really forced to be the front man. Now, obviously, I knew that's what I was getting myself into when I joined the band, but uh, but it was a new experience, you know, being naked without the guitar, all that kind of thing. But um, I found the audiences were the audiences made my job pretty easy, mainly because especially like the European festivals and stuff like the audiences are so charged up and they go along with stuff really nicely, and they were they were always really good. So. It took me a couple tries, you know, it, it didn't take me too long. Uh, I got a lot of advice from the guys in the band, like Russ and Jeff and Curran and all those guys. Um, all, all 40 members. Um, so, the, the background story, let me see. I was, um, I was in school at the time. No, I just finished school. Um, I had recently lost all my guitars, um, so... So I was like, well, what am I going to do? I can't afford guitars right now. I just got out of school. I got a bunch of debt, student loans, yada, yada, yada. So I was like, well, maybe I'll look for a band to sing for. So I tried out a couple local bands. Nothing was really grabbing me. And then my buddy Conan, like I said before, um, said, uh, hey, man, an is looking for a singer. Um, I told him uh, that I think you'd be really good for it. And uh, he gave me Jeff's number and called him up. And... Um, I, uh, I got a hold of, um, set the world on fire and, um, he basically wanted me to come in and sing two versions of the song. I sang it one exactly tried to singing, trying to sound exactly like Aaron Randall and then one singing it just my style and how I would like to. And, um, and he, I, I guess he liked it. I guess, um, a few other guys tried out, but they were more kind of on the death metal, a lot of growling and. Not many of them were really, had a, had too much melodic side to them, I guess. Um, so I guess the fact that I could actually sing helped. And um, I had also, about six months previous, um, just done a fill-in tour. I was just a um, temporary guy, um, a band, a Canadian, more commercial rock band called Theory of a Dead Man. Needed a guitar player in a hurry because one of their guitar players got really sick. So, um, he had to, they had to get him into a hospital and I just, I knew a guy who knew a guy and got really lucky and went on a tour with them in the States. So, and we did some big shows, you know, like I, I played some shows in like, uh, Miami and Tampa opening for like Corn and Disturbed and playing with like Seeger and, um, and like one with Seven Dust and some stuff with Saliva and bands like that. So I did have some experience playing in front of large crowds, like some like ten and fifteen thousand people. So that uh, that definitely worked in my favor for uh, going out and playing the festivals and the nerves and things. Once I got out there, when I was playing with Theory of a Dead Man, I realized that I wasn't scared of the crowds. So the bigger the crowd, the easier it is for some reason because it's I don't know, it's way less personal, way uh, you know so much so spread out you don't even see past the first 10 rows after that it's just a moving mass of flesh sounds tasty when you're in a small club you can see every pair of eyes and like there's you know 300 sets of eyes and you, you, there's so much more intense personal close energy so that's but at the same time that's equally awesome anyways i digress um yeah that's pretty much the, that's pretty much the story there um I guess, I don't know, I, I'm told I got the hang of it pretty quick. Um, I mean, I had no choice, I, so hopefully I did a pretty good job. From the, from the looks of it and from the sounds of it, I guess I did. I'm still here. So um, hopefully that answers your question without me uh, talking too much.